All right, I'm trying to hold this camera on the microscope as steady as I can. Uh, these are a couple of um, fractured solder joints. You can see multiple rings around. Sometimes the rings are just one very defined uh, failure around. These are multiple rings, but they're still a failure. Now they might function uh, sometimes, but heating and cooling will eventually make them fail. So this is just two solder joints out of hundreds. You see that one on the lower right corner there? That's real grainy. It hasn't failed yet, but that's really crappy. Um, that's on a solder, that's on a via, a feed through. Um, but it's still really crappy. So anyway, that's two really good examples of really, really bad solder. I hope you can see it well. It's as focused and as perfect as I can make it. All right, see you bye. All right, well, hopefully this is in focus. This is how I reflow hundreds and hundreds of solder joints. Some of you are going to ask, how many watts do I use on my soldering iron? I don't. My soldering irons aren't rated in watts. Um, they're rated by temperature. And this is either a 7 or 800 degree tip. My, um, my philosophy for soldering is high heat, short duration. <clears throat> try and solder everything inside the uh, lit circle here so I hope you guys can see it this TS440 these are the control boards right here but the two, con the two control boards and the display board just hundreds upon hundreds of solder joints some of them have had to rem some of them have had to remove the solder um, because they were so heavily fluxed that they just kept bubbling and creating voids in the solder even though I resoldered them. So I had to suck the solder out of them. That might be considered actually, you know, contaminated bad solder. Most of what I see on these boards, the solder's okay, just how it was applied back in the day was very, very poor. And as I've learned from doing lots of CB radios and 10 meter ham is it's really standard for this industry and that's really sad man. I'm a little surprised. Okay. I've got a roll of tape behind the second board here to hold this in position. Uh, let's see where are we here. Okay. Uh, the light on this microscope is an old halogen, and it works pretty good. It's a stereo microscope. Some of the older um, lighting have a ring lighting, and they spread the light out a little better so it doesn't glare back. This thing can really glare. But <clears throat> I got the angle right, um, so these, so these solder joints don't glare uh, to my eye through the eyepieces. Who knows? You guys might see uh, a lot of glare. I'm not sure. This is so hard to shoot. Um, I'm just going to do it this one time. Let's see. Oh, look at that huge void there. Wow, that's a factory void. Yeah, that one should probably be removed because it keeps it bubbling. It's not usually... Um, the solder is not usually contaminated, it just has way too much flux in it, which, yeah, I know. That is a form of contamination. Yeah, 
know, some of you are going to whine, I don't know. I'm not worried about it, I've been doing this a long time. I've paid, paid my mortgage having this skill. It's not the only skill, obviously, but when you're troubleshooting electronics, part of the process is making the repairs yourself. And that's what separates you from, you know, Joe Average. So, anyway, this is how I do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of solder joints. I'll have this done. This, this board's done already. This one's like 25% done and the display's done. So I'll get it done today. And then, um, I gotta figure out how to clean them. That's not gonna be fun because there's a lot of old flux on here too. The new flux will come off pretty good, but the old stuff, we shall see. All right, good enough for now. See you, bye.